Maybe I'll check you tomorrow. Just sort of been uh, staying out of sight, huh? My folks moved out here to Webster Groves. You guys know that. Look, I, I gotta get home. Now, well, quit fooling with you, man. Now, where's the bread? What bread? What bread? What bread? Oh, you know what bread? I bread. Three bills, man. Now, you didn't think we were gonna forget about it just because you moved out of town, now, did you? Look, I, I haven't got it right now, but I'll get it. I, I just need a little more time. Oh, well, we were not to live, you Craig, baby. No, we ripped off a quad stereo you wanted for your makeout machine here. And you forgot the final payment. You're all out of time. Okay. You can take it back. I'll get it for you. Oh, that's great. And what will we do with it? We ain't got nothing like this to put it in. And I don't think the sound store is going to let us take it back for credit. Do you, Roach? No way. Huh. You owe us three bills, man, and we want it. That's good. Leave me alone. Get out of here. Okay, that's great. That's great. You all right? Yeah. You want to play rough games, the athletic field has it all over this parking lot. Well, we would, except it's kind of hard to play with someone who doesn't follow the rules. I'm usually pretty good at faces. You guys aren't Truman students, are you? Just passing through. Are they friends of yours? No. I've never seen them before. Hey, we should have taken him on. Who? Wilt the Still? You kidding? What's this all about, Craig? Uh, nothing. I caught him messing around my car. So. Hey, maybe we shouldn't have let him off so easy. Well, no harm done. They're a bunch of punks. It's okay. Craig, you're late. Well, I had to stay after school and talk to my advisor. What's the matter? Something wrong at the new school? No. Look at this. A present from a client. Great old beauty, huh? Go ahead, try it out. What's the matter? Nothing. Well, go on, try it out. Ten rounds. Come on. <laughs> Hello. Craig, just a minute. Ten rounds for you. Hello? Uh, it's your old buddy again. What do you want? Three hundred bucks. I told you. I... And we told you. So look, why don't you wise up Save everybody a lot of trouble and make the arrangements. I, I, I'm working on it. We'll work harder. You got till Tuesday. What's that all about, Craig? Oh, just something for school. Oh, Craig, there you are. Hi, Mom. Oh, darling, you look tired. Is something wrong? Oh, uh, listen, your father and I have to go out to dinner tonight. You don't mind eating alone, you, you and Stephen? Oh, no, no, that's all right. Hey, Mom, look at my score. What score, dear? Miriam, the target. The score on the target that he just shot. Oh. All seems so unnecessary. All right, we better be on our way. Why don't we wait and have a drink over the language? All right, Craig. Ten rounds now. Don't forget, that's an order. Yes, sir. Now, good night, boy. 
Well, the sandwiches are in the fridge. Take care. Come on, Craig. You heard what Dad said. Yeah, I heard. Okay, jobs available. Let's see what we got here. Uh, babysitter, lawn trimmer, a bakery assistant. Uh, what kind of work appeals to you, Craig? Uh, I'd like to be a lumberjack. <laughs> Not too much call for part-time lumberjacks around Webster Groves. Let's go through these, see what we come up with. Hey, aside from after-school jobs, what, uh, what are your goals? College, I guess. Yeah, I've got your name on a list of students to talk to about their grades. Uh, I, I had a B average in St. Louis. Well, your borderline fail here at Truman. Does it change? New school? Finding it hard to shift gears? What? Yeah, I'll be okay in a couple of weeks. Anything I can do to help? Sure. Don't show my father that grade report until I've caught up. <laughs> I'll see what I can do, but no promises in that area. <laughs> Craig, if you want to get into college, you're going to have to work. You know, I don't mind working. It's just... Well, what I'd really like to do when I finish high school is take a year off. You know, get a camper, a van, go up to the woods and really study things, you know? You were serious about being a lumberjack. Well... Any chance of that? Oh... Do you know my father? Vaguely. Well, there's nothing vague about the way he's got my life all planned for me. Cradle to grave, pre-law, Harvard, editor of the Law Review, that's a must. Straight into the lower right-hand corner of the letterhead of a prestigious law firm. Then, you know, marry the right girl, work my way up to the upper left-hand corner. He's even got my cemetery plot all picked out for me. Can you believe that? My epitaph should read, Greater love hath no man than he that gives up his life to please his father. Craig. Do you mind if I talk to your father? Fine. I won't give away any secrets. I just want to get his point of view. Okay. Only I, I should warn you. You're not going to talk to my father. He's going to talk to you. Oh, what about that job? You know me, poor little rich boy. I've got to raise some money. You know how to make a hot fudge Sunday? You're looking at the hot fudge champion of St. Louis County. How's that? <laughs> it's a little heavy on the whipped cream. No, it's beautiful. Hey, how'd you get to be so good so fast? Well, I'll tell you. I have a built-in soda fountain in my house. I've had lots of practice. Yeah? Mm hmm Wow. All that and a supercar, too. Hmm. Your folks give you everything, don't they? Thank you. Almost everything. All right, breathe deeply, push. 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 Hey, what, what is this? Is this a physical training session or a sleep therapy? Is that the best you can do, boy? Jack, I'm not done yet. Ah, a boy. Come on, push. Jack, you have a visitor. Uh, hold it, hold it. This is Lucas Tanner, Craig's advisor at Truman Arms. Ah, Mr. Tanner. Well, nice to meet you. It's my pleasure. Right. Dad, are we done yet? Yes. You've had enough. All right, go on, champ. Grab yourself a shower. <laughs> Well, Mr. Tanner, what's uh, Craig been up to? Hasn't he made the honor roll yet? Not quite. I think he will someday, though. Oh, you bet your life he will. He's a bright kid. Got a fantastic future. I don't think he's quite as sure of that as you are. He seems to be a bit confused right now about what he wants to do. <laughs> well, of course he's confused. All high school boys his age are confused. I used to be that way. But the parents, you see, they're the ones that keep a child on the track. They keep the pressure on. It might be better to uh, take the pressure off for a while. Let Craig decide a few things for himself. Oh, you've got to be joking, Mr. Tanner. Take the pressure off? It sounds an awful lot like uh, permissiveness. Uh, you know, the boys this age don't know what they want. 
They need direction, and when you've been around the world as much as I've been, you'll kind of understand that. Would you, uh, would you like to stay for dinner? No, thank you. I've uh, got some things to do. Well, so do I. If you ever find out a way for a man to be in two places at the same time, will you let me know? <laughs> Can you show yourself out, Mr. Tanner? I, I think I'll just grab a shower. i got to get dressed and... Uh, listen, it's nice having this little chat with you. So, you want to come out and see the place sometime? i got to tell you, i got the biggest, finest, coldest house in all Missouri. <laughs> Okay, it's a date. I'll tell you what. I'll wear my fur-lined jacket and a pair of wool socks. <laughs> okay. okay. Oh, but, Barbie, don't say anything to my parents about the job, okay? I want it to be a surprise. Oh, sure. Hi, can I help you? Oh, yeah. Can I have a chocolate sundae with lots of whipped cream? And what about you? The same, but with uh, two cherries. Hey, guys, look, I don't want any trouble. Hey, guys, look, I don't want any trouble. Trouble? Who said anything about trouble? I didn't say anything about trouble. You say anything about trouble? I, I, I told you I'm working on it. What do you think I took this job? I'll take care of it. You gotta be kidding, man. Out of what you make here, it's gonna take you three years. Well, I got my allowance, too. Uh, I'll get it together. Look, we said Tuesday, Craigie boy. That's today. Ah, uh, thank you, darling. Barbie, get in the back. Go on, go on. Now, that's what I call a bad Sunday. Hey, you can't come in here. I made the money? What do you want $300 for? Well, I was thinking of maybe getting a quad stereo for my car. You have got to be joking. Well, I thought that... I don't want to talk about it right now. I'm preparing a case. I'd like to talk about it now, Dad. We'll talk about it some other time. I'm preparing a case right now. $300. Operator, this is mobile 394Y. I would like it. 394Y. Area code 314-555-6273. Benson, could you just drop me off at the corner? I just remembered something at home I need for school. Thank you. your job at the ice cream stand because three guys smashed the place up and Barbie told Mr. Thompson they were friends of yours. Now, don't you think it's about time you started to level with me? I don't know what to tell you. Well, why don't you start by telling me about the three guys you never saw before when they were hassling you in the school parking lot the other day? They're not friends. But you know them. They went to my old school in St. Louis. They used to hassle me there. That's where they get their kicks. No reason. Just for kicks. I guess it's because my father's rich. And a lot of guys get uptight about that. Oh, so three guys drove all the way to Webster Groves to bust up the place where you work just because your father's rich. I don't know. 
You're hiding something from me, Craig. What is it? All right. Then listen. Mr. Thompson is threatening to go to the police because of what happened at his ice cream stand. Is that what you want? No. And Mr. Hamilton's worried that your kind of acquaintances might cause trouble here at school. So let's find him and talk some sense to him before anything else happens. Well, look, I, I wouldn't know where to find him. I think they quit school. It shouldn't be hard to trace him. What are the names? I don't know. Just nicknames. No last names. No, sir. It'll be okay. Look, they won't cause any more trouble. I, I promise. Can I go now? some help? No, we won't be open for another hour. Oh, that's all right. I don't want ice cream. I'd like to talk to you have a minute. I'm Lucas Tanner from Truman High School. Oh? Well, if you came to see the mess made by that student you sent me, here it is. How bad was it? Bad enough. I mean, I got insurance, but this is going to send my rates sky high. Plus, it's bad for business. I mean, who's going to want to come around here with this kind of thing going on? You're right. I understand you weren't here when it happened. No, I was. I'm Barbie Logan. Hi, Barbie. What happened? I don't really know. They came in and they ordered a couple of Sundays, and the next thing I knew, they were wrecking the joint. Would you recognize them? Ever see any of them before? No, never. You told me they were friends at Craig's. I said that he knew them. They sure didn't act like friends. Do you know what they wanted? I don't know. To mess up the place. I guess for kicks. Is that all? No, they told Craig that they're going to be back. I really wish that I could tell you more. You've been a big help, Barbie. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Thompson. This is Stan. Mr. Tanner, good to see you. What can I do for you? Uh, nothing, thank you. I think uh, maybe there's something you can do for Craig. Well, I'm late for lunch right now, and I have a 3 o'clock discovery hearing. Is it urgent? Can we make it, say, let's see... Oh, a week from Friday, 4.30, 5 o'clock, we'll have a drink at my club. Take five minutes now, Mr. Stanton. All right, shoot, five minutes. And take an hour at home tonight and have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with your son. Find out what it is that's bothering him. Uh, there is something bothering him? I'm sure of it. Well, you know how kids are, Mr. Tanner. You've dealt with uh, enough of them yourself, and so have I. You know, Craig is a boy at this moment when... Uh, when something goes wrong, it's a big problem. Little minor upsets become major crises. It's, uh... How's he doing at school? Not as well as he could. Now, that's why I think it's important for you to try to reach him. I can't help but feel there's a, a lack of communication somewhere. You're out of line, Mr. Tanner. My relationship with both my sons is absolutely the best, and I don't appreciate you coming here in my office and telling me what is it to, to communicate with my own boy. We have no problems at home, and if there are any problems at school, that's up to you to handle it. That's your job. I know my job, and part of it is... All right, then do it. And everything will be all right. Now, would you excuse me? Mr. Stanton, your son has something on his mind. He won't tell me what it is. I know he wants to talk to you about it. <laughs> then we have no problem, have we? Because my son will talk to me about it. You know, Mr. Tanner, I have a theory. I believe that any problem can be solved when men sit down and talk them out. That is, of course, if you're dealing with the 5% of the people in this world who can think. Now, Craig can think. I know that. I really appreciate your coming. I'd be pleased to talk to you again anytime. Thanks for listening. Yes, Mrs. Simmons, I agree. Yeah, yes, ma'am, but it is normal to keep a student after school for disciplinary purposes. Y yes, yes, ma'am. Miss Simmons, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but uh, something's come up here. May I call you back? N yes, ma'am, I will call you back. Yeah, 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 in just a few minutes. Yes, ma'am. Th thank you very much. Bye. Bye. <laughs> They're here. 
I saw one of them in the corridor. is going to let you sweep that under the rug, do you? We couldn't if we wanted to, and we don't want to. No further comment. And I don't say it. I know I didn't handle that well at all. You did as well as could be expected. Those guys are out for blood. Yes, but they aren't the only ones. We're catching it from all sides. The press, the parents, the police. Even the school board's calling for an investigation. Why? They come right down to it. They're really none of our business. It just happened to take place in our parking lot. And Craig just happened to be one of our students. It happened during school hours. John, that makes it our business. We're just going to have to deal with it. citizen and I have an obligation to my government. I didn't know my obligation was going to be quite this steep, though. What would happen if you didn't pay? They'd toss me in the slammer. Glennon, don't you have homework to do? Only some dumb math. Bet I could do it a lot faster with this. How does it work? Glennon, do you mind? I'm trying to finish this mess. Sure. Sorry. I bet your father you on your taxes tonight. Get your mind off what happened to that boy at school today. Aren't you, Lucas? Yeah. How could a terrible thing like that happen to a kid? I mean, how could he be dead? Glendon. There's no real answer to that. It just happened. Fortunately, it doesn't happen often. People that young shouldn't die. But don't let it scare you, partner, because it's not going to happen to you. How do you know? Because I'm not going to let it, okay? Now, have you got any more questions before I add this up? Yeah, just one. What's this little orange button here? It's the erase button. You just wiped out all my work. I think I better go now, Lucas. Bye. Goodbye. Tanner. I only want you to know how sorry I am. 
Well, you're missing the point. You're being sorry or anybody else being sorry doesn't bring my boy back to me. But you could have done something. Now it's too late. You could have come to me. And you could have told me that my boy was in trouble. But you didn't. Mr. Stanton, we... My boy was attacked twice by those same punks. You knew that. The whole school knew it. The whole damn town knew it, except me. Mr. Stanton, all of us... And if I had known about it, I could have handled it. I know about these animals who run in the streets and attack decent citizens. But you don't know how to handle it. You, uh, coddle these punks. You work with them. You develop programs for yes. them. Never mind, dear. It's up to the courts now. Those punks are going to answer to the law. And if you mean what you say, if you're really sorry about what happened to my boy, then you'll prove it. And you'll help me put those punks away. All right, let's go. Mr. Tanner, are the boys you saw in this courtroom today? Yes, sir, at that table. At the record show that the witness has pointed to the accused, Edmund Blackie Mason, Charles Jojo Anderson, and Roger Roach Greener. Now, were these the same boys you saw struggling with Craig Stanton? Yes, sir. And they were struggling with him just before he was killed? No, sir, only one of them. Now, I'll ask you to walk over and place your hand on the shoulder of the boy you saw struggling with Craig Stanton the day he was killed. And this is the boy you saw kill Craig Stanton? No, sir. This is the boy I saw struggling with Craig Stanton at the time he was shot. Let the record show that the witness has identified Blackie Mason as the defendant who was struggling with Craig Stanton when he was shot. That'll be all. Your witness. Mr. Tanner, as I understand it, you didn't see the other boys in contact with Craig Stanton when he was shot. Only Mr. Mason. That's right, sir. And you never saw Mr. Mason pointing a gun at Craig Stanton or holding one at any time? No, I didn't. When was the first time you saw a gun that day, Mr. Tanner? When I went to where Craig was lying on the ground. The gun was lying about uh, two feet from his hand. No further questions. Tanner. Tanner. Well, congratulations. You got two of those young punks off scot-free, and you did the best to get the third one off. Mr. Stanton, I, uh swore to tell the truth on the witness stand, and that's what I did. You saw three wild young animals attack my boy, and you saw one of them kill him. Yet you got up there in that stand, and you equivocated until your testimony lost all of his credibility. Now, why, Tanner? Why couldn't you get up there and say that you saw Blackie Mason kill my son? Because I didn't. Tanner, that creep is going to go to trial. And you're going to have to testify again. Now, I advise you to consider very carefully what you say. I already because have. Because if he goes free, if he's allowed to ruin the streets again and threaten the lives of other fine young men in this community, I'm going to hold you personally responsible. out of school until we guarantee that they won't get shot by the mob from St. Louis. Meanwhile, a committee led by Stanton put the pressure on the mayor to send in the gendarmes. We can't teach classes in this kind of atmosphere. Oh, try telling that to a bunch of worried mothers and fathers. Oh, I'm telling you, Lucas, we're in for it. All we can do is hunker down and 
Wait till the storm passes. I don't agree, John. We can't afford to hunker down. This thing can cause too much damage. resolve that we will not attend classes under armed guards. <laughs> Therefore, be it further resolved that until said police are removed from our campus, we will remain away from school in mass in a student boycott of all classes, however long it may re require. And we're going to call it the blue flu. <laughs> Let's put it to a vote. Okay. Okay. Right. Denise, may I have a word, please? The chair recognizes Mr. Tanner. Thank you. You asked me here as your advisor. Well, here's my advice. <laughs> to rephrase your resolution without the blue flu and boycott threat. Oh. Wait a minute, let me tell you why. A petition for redress of grievances will carry a lot more weight with the administration. Now, if it doesn't work out for any reason, you can always consider other alternatives later on. Do I hear a motion to rephrase the resolution? expected to see you here, Tanner. I didn't expect to be here. Now, what can I do for you? Mr. Stanton, we know that you're behind the mayor's decision to put police guards at Truman High. Indeed. The school's in an uproar. We cannot operate an educational system in an armed camp. What do you want me to do about it? Use your influence to get the mayor to change his mind. Mr. Stanton, there's no need to have the police there. There's no danger now. So why don't you get them out of there and let us get on with normal school affairs? Nothing I can do about it, Tanner. You know, public opinion is one of the strongest influences in the world. And what's happened to your school is a result of public opinion. Look, I don't think you realize what you're doing to Truman High. And you don't seem to remember what your school did to my son. How long do you plan to have this uh, police protection maintained? Until Mason is convicted and sentenced. And at this point, you can do a lot more for Truman High than I can. If you understand what I mean. As a lawyer, don't you think it looks strange for me to change my story under public pressure? Mr. Tanner, you haven't begun to feel public pressure yet, but you will. If Blackie Mason is set free, if he's just given a slap in the wrist, now if that happens, you have no idea what the good citizens of this community will do. May I? You made the front page and the editorials. Oh, I can imagine the editorial. You think the school killed that boy? How far does our responsibility go? What about the news story? School advisor's testimony clears two of the accused. Lucas Tanner denies seeing fatal shots fired. I hope that's explained more fully in the article. You came out sounding like a witness for the defense. The editorial wondered if you had your eyes closed. 
Everybody wants it nailed down. Blackie Mason killed Craig Stanton, but it's not that simple. Why is it? What, you two? In spite of the fact that you didn't actually see the boy pull the trigger. That seems to be the only rational explanation, doesn't it? There were three of them, John. Why did one of them feel the need to carry a gun? I don't know. Oh, uh, something interesting about that gun in here. It's traced to a man named Carlton Delaney. It's probably stolen from him. What do you mean, probably? Don't they know for sure? The police were unable to reach him. He's out of the country, but he's known to have a gun collection. His gun collection? What's the matter? Coincidence. <laughs> Come on, ball. Watch it, Jojo. You're gonna tilt. The king never tilts. The king never tilts. The king never tilts. My turn. Hi, how's it going? Well, if it ain't Will, still. So how'd you find out about this place? Well, I got your phone number from the school and then talked to your mom. Yeah? So why'd she tell you where I hang out? Probably because she loves you and she's worried about you. Yeah, sure. So, um, what's shaking, man? Well, that's what I want to know. Can we have a talk? Talk your head off. I want to talk about Blackie. Things look pretty bad for him. Look, our attorney says we got to keep our mouths shut, so we ain't talking. Okay. But I am. The truth is, you boys never had the gun. Is that right? Craig had the gun? How'd you find out about that? I'm gonna call it ESP, am I right? Look, you said it, not me. Talk to our lawyer. Maybe I don't have to. Oh, uh, there's one other thing. Why did you guys go after Craig in the first place? I mean, what did you want from him? Why do you feel he had to protect himself by carrying a gun? Protect himself? Man, he was gonna use that piece. Sorry, I can't buy that. Not Craig. Why? Because he was some kind of angel? Yeah, well, you didn't know him like we did. He was into us for a bundle. He owed us. All we were trying to do was collect. Collect for what? He wanted a quad stereo for his car, so we ripped one off for him. He didn't pay, that's it. Did he know you were stealing? Well, that was the deal. A $700 stereo for $350. It's pretty expensive, Jojo. Yeah. Well, he had to have the best. He gave us 50 up front. He owed us three bills. We came after it, pulled a gun, Blackie tried to get it from him, boom, it goes off. So we split. And that's it. Okay. I, I thought Jack was in here, but I'll find him. Excuse me. Good shooting. Nice shooting. Thanks. You shoot? Well, as a matter of fact, I used to be pretty good when I was in the Air Force, but I haven't touched a gun since. To tell you the truth, uh, guns make me a little nervous. Dad says a gun's a man's best friend. Well, I thought a dog was a man's best friend. Mm, some bad guys aren't afraid of dogs. <laughs> Wave this in front of them and see what they say. Does your dad say that, too? Yeah. you got to protect yourself in this world. Look what happened to Craig. Stephen, Craig was shot. Are you all finished, Stephen? Five more rounds, Dad. That's very good, son. Why don't you go and treat yourself to a soda? I don't think there's any left. Out in the kitchen. Try out there. Well, what is it this time, Tanner? I know the gun was registered to a Mr. Delaney, but I think it came from your collection. Jack, is that true? Yes, 
It's true. I found out about it this afternoon. Delaney was a client of mine, and he did give the gun to me as a present. I just simply forgot to go down and have the registration changed to my name. Did you tell the police, or were you waiting for Blackie to be sent away? Now, look. All that matters is that my boy was attacked by those hoodlums. He tried to defend himself, and in the process of committing a crime, he was killed by those punks. That's murder. And that's all that the law is concerned with. Mr. Stanton, I'm not a lawyer, but I know it makes a big difference who had the gun, the difference between murder and maybe manslaughter. Mason's lawyer knows about the gun. But Mason's lawyer can't prove it. He's waiting till they find Delaney. You're still sticking up for that criminal, aren't you, Tanner? And what would have happened if Craig hadn't had a gun? What would have happened, at least with a gun, he had a chance to defend himself? He'd be alive. They threatened him. Do you know why? Why is immaterial? Not to me. Why, Mr. Tanner? Because Craig didn't keep a promise to pay them $300 for a stolen car stereo. I don't believe it. Didn't he ask you for the money? Did he? Jack, did he? Yes, he, uh... He did say that he wanted a stereo. It's in his car. Well, that still doesn't change anything. Doesn't make any difference. He didn't have the money, so he took the gun to scare him away. It doesn't make any difference who took the gun. Blackie Mason killed him. No. The gun killed him. Your gun killed him. Can't you understand that? Can't you understand why it happened to your son? Tanner, I understand what happened to my son. He is dead. And I understand that you're a bleeding heart do-gooder who has no idea about what this world is really like. What's going on? Oh, there's nothing going on. Uh, I've had five more rounds in there. Go ahead. Would you excuse us, Mr. Tanner? If you won't listen to me, maybe you'll listen to him. Stephen. Leave him alone. I want to ask you something. If Blackie Mason isn't found guilty of killing your brother, if something happens and he's released, what do you think should be done about that? Well, I don't know what should be done officially. But I know what I'd do if I had the chance. I'd go after him with a gun. Then wait till I had a good, clear shot. And then... Thank <laughs> you.